Previously, I remade The Simpsons Hit and Run in a week, and the video got over 4 million views in two weeks, and the lead designer of the original game even commented on that video. But if I can remake The Simpsons Hit and Run in a week, what could I do if I took my time? Online co-op? Open world? What is truly possible? Welcome back to Remaking Simpsons Hit and Run. Oh, this is going to be a good one. I'm excited for this one. Alright, so we're back in Springfield, and um, in this video, I think we've done enough on the map for now. Like, I want to I wanna slow down on the map for a bit, and I want to work on our characters, I want to work on our vehicles. There's a whole bunch of coding to be done, so I think that's where we need to go this episode. So in RuneScape, I really love that you can change how far away the camera is, and the camera is attached to this camera boom, and I can change the length of it really easily. So I just hooked the scroll wheel up to actually set the length of the camera arm. This just means in game you can choose the exact camera that you want. And I had a clamp on it, but then I was like, why not just let it zoom as far as you want it, you know? But then I started going into Bird's Eye and it reminded me so much of how you switch characters in GTA 5. And so I knew that I had to do GTA 5 style character switching in the game as well. I've already got models for Marge and Arpo, so I've placed them in the level, and now we can try and make a character switching system. Oh, I'm so upset. I just recorded this whole saga where I was making the GTA style switching, and I didn't record any of it. But it's working now. There were so many funny moments, like there were so many hilarious bugs trying to get the system to work. But anyways, as you can see, for any number of characters that are in the level, you will be able to seamlessly switch between them. It's not exactly copying how GTA does it, but I think it's actually nicer. Um, GTA had to like load out the level and load it back in, but with Unreal Engine 5, you really don't have to load the level out or anything like that. We can just do it seamlessly on the fly. Pretty cool. One of the big issues is that the map has heaps of gaps in it though, and so I knew I needed to make the island into a proper one. So what I did is I added a landscape, and then I filled in all the gaps before adding the water back in. But oh man was this not without some real challenges, like half of the Lisa level was underground, loads of seams needed closed in, but the map looks so much better now, like this was a great investment of time, because now if we ever want planes or some new feature that's going to put our camera high up in the air, we can do it because the map's going to look great from any angle. I know I kind of ruined the surprise by making this the intro shot to the video, but Dude, this island looks so good now, I'm so happy with this. And of course now when you switch characters you don't see any ugly gaps or seams in the map. A lot of people said that I should go for like a cartoony look, and there's actually this guy Skull who has made a cell shading pack, so we're gonna try it out. And shout out to Skull, fellow New Zealander. Let's go ahead and find one of these, uh, we'll take one of these presets here. Let's try 80s cartoon. Oh, that's a pretty good start, I don't mind that, that one's actually pretty good. It gets a little overwhelming, I think, if you're, like, really far back, but that's a cool effect. I think the way that I would do it is I would make it a toggle so you don't have to use cell shading if you don't want it. But that's really cool, I really like that. God damn it, man, I said I was gonna do programming this video, and I'm getting totally sidetracked doing all this cell shading and map stuff. What I think we should do now, I'm gonna try and add pedestrians to the game, because I think it's gonna give the world just, like, a lot more life having them walking around. This episode is sponsored again by my own tool, the Narrative Quest and Dialogue Editor. Whatever genre your game is, you're probably going to need missions and dialogues in it at some point. And I'm just going to say it, my tool is the easiest one to use. We only have five star reviews so far, and it's because the tool just works. And the most common question I get is, does it support this type of dialogue, or does it support this type of quest? And the answer is always yes. Narrative can basically handle any quest or dialogue you could think of. Even more complex features like dialogues that have multiple different characters, cinematic shots, injecting variables into the dialogue. Here you can see we're actually displaying the player's username and dialogue. I even have a free demo available so you can actually check out the plugin before you buy it, but if you want to have a look at it, the link is in the description. Also in the description is my Patreon, you get access to my 40 part Unreal Engine C++ survival game course, and early access to these hit and run remake videos, and a lot of project files and other cool stuff as well. So thank you for supporting, and now let's make the civilians. Okay, so for my first attempt at the pedestrian system, we basically have this massive spline, and the spline is just 
mapped out to the footpath. I mapped out some of the footpath. It would probably take maybe five hours to do the entire level, maybe a little bit longer, so I've just done this little stretch of footpath for now. Because I don't have the art yet, the NPCs are just going to be spheres for now. So let me show you the system. We're going to go ahead and try this out. I'm going to hit simulate. And so you can see some of the spheres move along the line and the ones that are going in the opposite direction, you can see they're keeping to the right side of the spline. And so that way they don't bump into each other. Big shout out to my friend Sam from Australia. I'll link all of his stuff in the description, but he's a really talented artist and he is actually remaking Hit and Run himself. And he's doing a really good job, but he knows how to rip these pedestrians, so he sent these over. And now we can replace our boring spheres with the actual pedestrian characters. Okay, so I've swapped the sphere out with a pedestrian, and if we go to the event graph, I've added a little bit of code, and what it does is it selects one of the pedestrians at random, so they should all be randomized. NPCs look pretty good, and because they walk on the opposite sides of the path, they will always avoid each other, which is kind of nice. The NPCs are programmed that if they reach the end of the footpath, they will just change directions. These might be the derpiest looking characters in existence. Like, this is PS1 Ron Weasley level of graphics. I'm off to murder someone. Cool thing about the NPCs too is we can up the numbers and spawn heaps of NPCs in, and the system seems pretty efficient. It seems like it can handle heaps. Well, obviously I'm going to have to try to spawn 300 NPCs. I mean, that would be absurd if I didn't. Is it just me, or is there something really creepy about the way these people are walking? Kumbaya, 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 kumbaya. Manic J says, it would be funny if instead of an island, you put a glass dome around Springfield. Well, I'm sorry to tell you, Manic J, but I have kind of committed to the island at this point, but I guess we could still put a dome around Springfield. If you think about it, it's kind of consistent with the law, because didn't they put the dome around Springfield to stop everyone leaving? Well, if Springfield was an island, they, they would still technically use this dome to stop people leaving. It still kind of makes sense, even though it doesn't. Does any of this make sense? How do you get into the tea factory? Do you, do you have to go into the slide factory to get into the tea factory? I don't know. One of the biggest challenges of this remake is that I'm not an artist, and look at this car. I mean, this totally needs remastered, but I can't do it. Like, I, I don't have the skills to do it. But I got an email that is going to change everything. So this guy Billy Schwenzer sent me this email, please find the pink sedan. And I'm going to put his art station in the description below because this guy is incredible. Alright, so we have Billy's car in the project and he has said he's going to make it convertible as well. So don't worry guys, but let's go ahead and um, look at the differences. I mean, you can see a lot of inspiration has been taken between the old and the new models, but just a lot more detail. Okay, let's talk about the car's shader. So you can see here I've plugged in the base color for the car, and the car now has some color applied to its body, but there's still not a lot of detail. And so in 2022 we have physically based rendering, which is basically a way to render surfaces in more of a realistic way. So the next thing I'm going to plug in is the emissive map for the sedan. So we'll plug that in. And watch what changes on the car when I apply. You can see that the lights now glow. So the emissive map tells the car which parts of it should glow. So we use that for the lights. Next up, the normal map will add a little bit of fake sort of geometry to the car is the best way I can explain it. When I apply it, you'll notice that there's just a lot more sort of divots in the car that are shaded in. And depending on which way the lighting comes from, these divots will change. So that's not super noticeable now, but in the game it will be. And now probably the biggest change of all, the occlusion, the roughness, and the metallic maps. When I apply these, you can see that now the paint will be a lot more shiny, the parts of the car that should be a bit metallic looking are, so a huge change there. And now we basically have the finished shader for the paint, and now it's time to do the rest of it. Okay, so the first problem is, if you look at the physics body of this car, the game thinks it should be a big capsule, and if I try to drive the car, it's just going to roll around, like it will literally roll around. What I'm going to do is I'm going to make something called a single convex hull, and if I click add bodies, you can see it makes a perfect little convex around the car for its collision. Then we need to add spheres for each of the wheels. So all we have to do is select all the wheels on the car, go to sphere, and then click add bodies. And you can see that's actually a really good 
auto-generated physics. There you go. I mean, that's pretty much all you need. I think we should be able to... I think that should work. But I'm curious if this will just work already. Let's give it a go. Guess not. Alright, so I think that was just a freak crash. So I put the vehicle back in the level and we should be able to play. <laughs> okay. Okay, I'll take it. All right, at least it drives. So the way it works is there's actually this wheel controller that comes with Unreal Engine and it just takes control of the wheels for you. So you don't have to animate them yourself. Just look at this. Yes. Oh, dude. Oh my God. Oh, sweet baby Jesus. Oh my God, dude. Wow. Shout out to my man, Billy. This is incredible. To play this game as a kid and then to come back and like see this the inner child in me is just freaking out right now man hey i like that you can control your car in the air though i think that's kind of a cool change and also if your car flips over you're actually able to recover it as well dude i didn't realize this but in unreal engine physics based vehicles really are physics based vehicles they are not lying <laughs> I'm wrecking Bush's car. So I've just added this box to the car and basically when you walk up to the box it'll allow you to interact with the car which will let you take control of it. So now if we run up to the car it should say press E to interact or press action and now we can get into the car. Now I still have a lot of work to do as far as I need to hide your original character, I need to put him into the car and stuff but pretty cool and I wonder did I code getting out of the car? Uh no it just puts you back to where you were but there you go. Dude, I'm, I'm so excited. Like, I'm so excited. This is so cool. This is so damn cool. Oh, did I mention you should subscribe to me? Alright, so Billy has finally provided the convertible version. So, I mean, look how good that looks. I turned the cell shading back on. I reckon that looks so, so good. But, there's more. You better like the goddamn video, alright? Like the goddamn video right now. I'm serious. Click the like button and subscribe. Fun real or uni. So yeah. <laughs> delay. We need each other. There we go. Oh yeah. Oh, that's so sick. We have... got a little bit of suspension. The five year old fun. child in me is just like so excited. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Do you remember driving this car in the original game and how fragile Didn't it was? Yeah, it just exploded nearly instantly. <laughs> it went not oh, nearly Rob Robin Reliant did it. Okay, so I haven't worked with shaders very much, but I coded basically a shader that randomly blinks. Let's see if you can spot the problem with my blinking shader. Can you see the problem? Can you see it? So, how do we fix that? Well, if we add the position of the character into the equation, because each character has its own position in the world, this should totally fix it. And so now, as you can see, because our positions are unique, we will not blink at the same time anymore. I'm just wondering, do you guys think I should keep these old school animations? These are actually the animations out of the original game, and I could remaster the animations too, but I think these old school ones are actually pretty cool. Right now I'm just working on Homer getting into the vehicle. Um, so I've done a little bit of work on that, but still has a lot more to go, so I will show you that when that is done. Pa 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 potato graphics. <laughs> I nailed that. Oh my god. Shout out to Sam, by the way, he's been helping out a lot with the project and he actually sent me the settings to use for his car. And now the vehicles definitely feel a lot more like the original game. I actually haven't added any sound to the car yet as well, so that'll be a cool challenge. I would like to remaster the car audio. I think the car sounded pretty dumb in the original game. But if you guys think I should keep the original audio for the car, I mean, I'm happy to do that as well. It's really a community thing, you know, I'm trying not to be selfish with this project and uh, if you guys really want a certain thing in the game, then, uh, you know, let's add it. Oh my god. Look at that sign. Oh, oh god. 
Sometimes in game development, like, the smallest feature can take ages, like, getting this animation of Homer getting in the car, which still isn't perfect by any means. Honestly, that took me, like, three hours. Like, that was a really long thing to add into the game. One thing that wasn't in the original game is the uh, first-person camera in the cars. I think all cars should have that. The rocket car doesn't have its door working yet. I am working on adding that. But a first-person view inside the car. This one doesn't have a textured interior yet, by the way. Um, but I just think it adds a, a cool new perspective. Like, no one's seen The Simpsons Hit and Run from this point of view before. Why would we remake it if uh, we couldn't add some cool new stuff to the game? And I gotta say, man, the cars are feeling great. Like, I love the, the feeling of the driving in this game. It's definitely not exactly like the original, but in a good way. Like, the driving feels really, really nice. The next thing I want to fix is the steering wheel doesn't actually turn when you turn. I feel like that's a pretty easy thing to fix. Okay, so to add steering to the game, I added this transform bone to my animation blueprint, and I'm telling it to control the steering wheel. And so now I can actually plug in a value that will rotate the steering wheel. So I hooked it up to the car's steering input, and uh, this is a little bit of a problem. Ignore Homer's hands for the minute, but you can see that the steering wheel just snaps to exactly whatever key I'm pressing to steer the car. To fix this, we just use interpolation, which basically just smooths out the value. Instead of snapping the wheel to wherever the steering is, it'll glide to where the steering is. And so now if I jump into the rocket car, you can see that the steering wheel now smoothly glides to where it needs to go, and it looks a lot better. Still need to get the hands working. That part is a lot trickier than just rotating the wheel, but uh, we'll get to it in time. Oh, I'm so stoked about this. All right, we've got the hands working, and they work perfectly well in third and first person, so that's a big win. Oh man, this looks so good. The interior obviously is not complete yet, but oh my goodness, man, this car is looking very snazzy. My driving, not so great. Dude, there's no limit to what we can do. Like, I can put this on a mobile phone if I want. I can put this in VR, you know? It's not 2003 anymore. <laughs> I love that the camera is completely unclamped. Like, you can do whatever you want with this camera. I love it. Oh, that is actually pretty cool. Dude, the, I'm, I'm not gonna lie, that actually ended up being a really cool feature. The ability to zoom out as far as you wanted. Some other things that I haven't mentioned in this video is we actually got the correct signs now. And um, also the vending machines and the crates. Sam actually managed to rip these out of the game. And even this duff truck here, he has the original animations for that as well. I hooked it up to be all interactable. But one of the big problems is hand placing all of those Buzz Cola crates and vending machines around the world. But luckily there's kind of a smart fix that we're going to look into in the next video. Anyways guys, that's going to be it for this video. Uh, we've got some crazy things coming in episode 3. I don't want to give anything away, but if you thought this episode was crazy, you just wait until the next one. But anyways, that's the video. Subscribe to Rubes. If I get 20,000 subs off this video, I will release the next one a week earlier.